Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now do you know that some computers store numbers backwards and they actually do that intentionally? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. When we write down numbers, we actually write them down the most significant digit first. So if I had the number 101, I write down the one for the hundreds column first, then the uh, zero for the tens column, and then one for the units. And also it allows me to do approximations very quickly. So if I saw 101, then someone might say, you know, how far is it to that place? And I could say, well, it's actually around 100 kilometers, even if it was 105, if it was 110, I know that the minor changes, the least significant changes are on the right hand side and the most significant parts, the most important parts are on the left hand side. And as you know, computers work in binary, things can either be on or they can be off, a one or a zero. And when we write down a number in binary, we also write down the most significant bit on the left and the least significant bit on the right. So if we take the number 42, for example, which in decimal is four lots of tens and two lots of units, in binary that's zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. And we know that the leading two zeros there at the beginning mean there are no 128s and no 64s, and then you start to add up the rest of the numbers. And on the right hand side, we see that there are no ones, but there is one uh, two. So again, the uh, least significant part is on the right hand side and the most significant part is on the left hand side. Now that's fine when you're dealing with an eight bit byte. Now we won't go into discussion now about computers that don't use 8-bit bytes or multiples thereof, 16, 32, and 64. That's a discussion maybe for another day. But assuming we're working with an 8-bit byte, if we now go up to a bigger number, let's say 298. Now, I chose that number specifically because actually what it is is just a 1 in the ninth bit and then a 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So really it's a 1 and then the 42. And that's because, of course, it's 256 plus 42. Now, again, having written that down now over nine bits, we're still using the most significant bit on the left and the least significant bit on the right. But if you divide that now up into two bytes, you basically get a byte with a one in it. That was the 256 part, but it's now a separate byte. And you get a byte with a 42 part in it. Okay, so you've got one in here and 42 in here. And together, they become a nine bit word, which means 298. Separately, they are one and 42. Now, the question is, how should these numbers be stored in memory? Should you store the one first and then the 42? Or should you store the 42 first and then the one? So there are some computers that store the one first and then the 42. And then there are other computers that store the 42 first, which of course is 2a in hexadecimal, and then the one first. And the reason they do that is for historical reasons. When we do adding up, we actually add up from the right and go to the left. So first we add up the units, then there's a carry, maybe a carry into the tens column. Then we add the tens column. If there's a carry, it goes into the hundreds column. So we actually add up from right to left, but we read from left to right. And computers do exactly the same thing. When they want to add up, they start with the least significant part of the sum. So of course, if you're reading through the memory doing addition, it makes sense to actually read the least significant byte first and do the addition with the least significant byte on the sum that you're doing, and if there's a carry, that goes over into the next byte. So actually, for addition in computers, going from least significant first through to most significant actually makes sense. And it also means that if I have a number, let's say in a 64-bit word, and I'm only using the last little bit at the end, let's say just for the number 42, then if I want to convert that into an 8-bit word, of course on a 64-bit computer you have to read all those bytes of zeros till you get to the very end and then say, let's just take this last one. But if, of course, if that 42 was stored at the beginning, you just say, well, how many bits do you want this number in? I want it in eight. Well, I'll just read one byte then, that's it. Or if I want it in 16 bits, fine, I'll just read two bytes and I'll throw the rest of it away because you already know that the first two bytes start at the least significant part. And that's where we are actually with Intel processors today. They use this little Endian system. 
So little endia means that at the beginning of the word is the little part, the little end, okay, little endian. And then in a big endian system, you start with the most significant bite at the beginning. So it's the big end, the thousands, the, the hundreds of thousands, the millions, okay, are at the big end. So it's big endian. So it depends on whether you're starting with the least significant or the most significant part. Now, because of some processes that Intel designed before the 8086 and before the 80286 and so on, they made some decisions that were to do with 8-bit values and even before that even with processing bits of numbers that meant they wanted to process the least significant bit first and as a result now all these years later we're still using on Intel based machines a this little endian system where numbers are actually stored backwards. Now the disadvantage of the little endian system is this first of all when you're trying to look at the numbers as a programmer and you maybe you're looking at a section of memory then everything is backwards and it's very hard particularly when you start dealing with 64-bit numbers to even work out what this number is your brain's got to do some real mental arithmetic to try and work it out maybe you copy it down and kind of you know work out what this number is and the other thing is like in my tutorial where I'm designing a CPU instruction set and the link to that will be in the description below. It's much easier to design knowing that we're using the big engine system because it's the way we read. We read from left to right, so we'll store the addresses, we'll store the data in memory left to right, and it's much easier for us to conceptualize. And big ending is also good when you want to do bit shifting to the left and to the right. So for example, if you just have the number one, which is in the very first bit over on the least significant part, and you shift it all to the left, then actually the one moves into a two, so you've doubled it. If you then move it to the left again, the two goes into a four, so you've doubled it. And the inverse is true, if you go to the right, you actually move from a four back down to a two, and then from a two back down to a one, so actually you can do multiply by two and divide by two very quickly by shifting the bits left and right. If the bits are stored the other way around, then of course you can't do that just by shifting all the bits inside of, uh, or inside of that register, for example. If you've got a 16-bit register or a 32-bit register, you can't just shift them all to the left and right because they're stored the other way around. So you actually have to shift all the bits to the left of one, see if there's a carry, put that into the other side, having shifted it, and so on and so on. So it's a much more complicated thing. So little ending is good for, let's say, things like addition, big ending for human readability, and for uh, things like bit shifting. So of course, the question is, which one is the right way around? Well, actually, I say big ending is the right way around and some of you I'm sure will disagree with me, but I tell you why it's most important today that we think about big ending, that is because network byte order, network byte order, what's that? The order that bytes are sent over the network, and it's everything we do today is to do with the internet, streaming video, emails, messaging, apps, everything we do is to do with the internet. It's important in what order are they sent across the internet? And the internet is defined that basically you send the big endian format, you send the biggest, most significant bytes first, and then you end up with the kind of the tens and the units at, at the other end. So basically, over a network, things have to be sent in big endian, which means that if you have a little endian machine, you have to send them in the reverse order. So when you see packets flying across the internet, if you're doing any network debugging, if you're looking at things like HTTP or things like that, then the bytes are gonna be in a big endian format which of course is good for, for us humans to be able to read it that way. And of course the other thing of course today is we're dealing not just with 8-bit bytes, we're dealing with 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit computers. So the advantage of being able to add one byte by taking the least significant byte first to the least significant byte of another number really doesn't really apply today because internally a lot of our modern processors are dealing with these as 32-bit or 64-bit numbers. So internally, it doesn't really mind that it has to work from the right to the left because it's all dealing with the same thing inside of the same register inside of the internals of the computer. And so this is really a, a throwback to the days when things were coming either as a bit stream or a little bit later as kind of blocks of eight bits, which we call a byte, and then having to deal with them sequentially as they come down, uh, come down any kind of memory bus or something like that. Okay, so there you go. That's how computers store numbers in their memories and in their registers, either least significant byte first or most significant byte first, big endian, little endian, and it all goes back to some decisions that uh, some computer designers made way back when Intel were designing chips before the 8086.
Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Please hit that bell notification icon. And well, um, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.